If you're interested in learning to configure the SRX series as a DHCP server, be sure to check out our Juno security course to learn more about security and using the Juno's OS on SRX series devices. For full details, just visit juniper.net slash courses and search for the course in the keyword search box. You can also see the complete Juno security learning path at juniper.net slash learning paths. Now let's get to the good stuff. Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs and I'm a content developer within education services inside of Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the configuring the SRX as a DHCP server learning byte. So you're probably asking yourself at this point, why would I want to use the SRX as a DHCP server? Great question. And the answer is all about reducing and eliminating the need for a standalone DHCP server in a small network environment. You know, this is great for small offices or home offices. And truthfully, in my home office, this is exactly what I have. I have an SRX device that also functions as the DHCP server. And I have it that way, so there's no need for me to set up something else to act as the DHCP server. This also works great in small office scenarios where you don't need that standalone DHCP server either. So here's our example. And there's a few things I want to point out first before we jump into the instructions for the example. And first I want to point out that we have the SRX1 device which connects this branch office to the internet. And in this branch office we have server 1 and server 2 and their associated IP addresses. And we have laptop 1 and laptop 2 and their associated IP addresses and MAC addresses. So in this scenario, these laptop devices need specific IP addresses to be able to access their servers. Basically, the SRX1 device is set up to allow access to the servers based on the source IP address. So if the laptop devices do not have the IP addresses shown on the slide, they are not allowed access to the servers. Now an easy solution for this might be just to put static IP addresses on the laptops. However, this doesn't work. The laptops are taken home frequently as the workers in this branch office either work from home or bring their work home with them. So in that scenario, if we set up static IP addresses, the laptops probably wouldn't work in their home office. So we need to set up DHCP on the SRX1 device. We need to configure SRX1 to hand out a specific IP address to Laptop 1 and a specific IP address to Laptop 2. And we can do that via DHCP with the SRX1 device. All right, so here is the CLI for SRX1. And so let's first examine what we have for DHCP. And we can see here that the SRX1 device tells us that yeah, we don't have it configured, which we don't. So, you know, that's cool. That's what we expect. And so let's go ahead and jump to the laptop devices and see what's going on there. Okay, so here's the laptop one device. Uh, and so we can see here that we don't have internet access. That's never a good sign. So let's look and see what we have for an IP address. And that's not a good sign either. You can see the IP address is set to the 169 address. And as you may know, that is the automatic private IP address assignment that happens when a device can't find a, a, a DHCP server. And that's expected. We don't have DHCP configured with the SRX1 device yet. So let's go ahead and jump to Laptop 2. Okay, so here's Laptop 2. And as you can see, we again have no internet access. And I bet if we look at the IP config, yep, the 169 address. That's that automatic private IP address assignment. Uh, basically, we're not getting anything from the DHCP server. And 
that's okay that's expected we need to configure that DHCP server on SRX1 so there are really two major areas that you need to configure first is going to be the DHCP local server well actually first we're going to configure the access uh, the address assignment pool and then we have to configure the DHCP local server so let's let's jump into that configuration we're going to name that pool branch and then we have to specify uh, which uh, protocol family we're going to be configuring DHCP for we have the options of INET or INET 6 and in our scenario we just need to configure INET which is for IP version 4 the first thing we need to configure is the network and with this the network is going to be 172.31.19.0/24 and then we need to configure the range of addresses that we want to hand out we are going to name this range laptops and we're going to begin with a low range of 172.31.19.1 and a high range of 172.31.19.200 so this basically means that we're going to be handing out addresses starting at that dot one address and if we get so many devices we can get basically up to you know two hundred devices here as we hand out uh... we can hand out the last address is two hundred of course if you know this branch office here was to get more than that many hosts that we need to hand out IP addresses for and that can be adjusted and we could also set up another pool to actually hand out different addresses from a different range next we need to configure the DHCP attributes we first need to configure the maximum lease time we have some options here we can set the number of seconds or we can set it as a infinite amount of time here we'll just set it as one hour which is 3600 seconds and then we need to configure the name server which is going to use the 8.8.8.8 name server which is the DNS server of course and then we need to configure a router address and what this is the router address is the default gateway that we're going to be handing out to the laptops and that's going to be the SRX device itself since that acts as the default gateway for the branch office and so things look pretty good there let's go to the DHCP local server configuration which is under the system services configuration hierarchy and under here we're going to set a group called branch and so we're going to now specify which interface we're going to be listening for DHCP requests on and handing out those uh, IP addresses and this is going to be gig 001 which is the interface that points towards the laptop devices and that appears to to be it here things look good so let's go ahead and commit that configuration and then let's jump to the laptop devices okay here's the laptop device let's go ahead and renew that IP address okay as you can see here we also it timed out with this laptop one device and again we're getting that 169 address so something wrong here so let's jump back to the SRX device and what is actually going wrong here or what is happening wrong is if we look at the security zones we see the gigi 001 interface is a part of the trust zone and the only thing allowed there is the SSH traffic under host inbound system services that's a problem we need to allow DHCP and that's odd look at this notice how there is not DHCP in this list we could say all and enable all system services but that's not very secure you may not want to do that and the reason behind that is we actually have to set DHCP under the interface itself and so that should help us out tremendously let's commit the configuration and let's jump to the laptop device alright so here's the laptop one device let's 
Let's renew that. And this is a much better sign. All right, we got a 172.31.19.1 address. And look here, we do have internet access. Let's jump to the Laptop 2 device. All right, so look at here, uh, Laptop 2. We have a 172.31.19.2 address. That's awesome. That's exactly what we hope to see. And we also have internet access. Cool. So let's go ahead and try to ping a few things. You can ping Google. That means we definitely do have internet access. Let's try to ping server 1. And that address is 10.1.1.100. Ah, interesting. Look at this. We're getting a reply from the SRX 1 device which is saying destination port unreachable and you know that's not what we really want but it, if we look at the actual IP address again we can see that we're actually getting that dot two address with laptop two we actually want to get in the last octet there dot one oh two so let's jump back to laptop one okay here's laptop one let's do the same thing can confirm internet access Trying to ping server one. Again, same thing. Let's try to ping server two. And same thing. And it's the exact same reason. We're getting dot one in the last octet. With laptop one, we wanted to get dot one oh one. And the reason behind that is SRX one is only permitting traffic from those specific IP addresses. So let's jump back to the SRX device. Okay, here's the SRX device, and to configure uh, the SRX to hand out IP addresses to specific devices via the MAC address, we need to go back to the access configuration, the address assignment. And we can see in here that we have the pool branch. We'll edit under that pool. And under here, what we'll actually get under the family INET so we don't have to type out so much, we can specify a host. And for laptop one, we'll just call this L1. First, we want to specify the hardware address, which is going to be 00 colon 0C colon 29 colon A1 colon FE colon 17. And then we can specify which IP address to hand out. 172.31.19.101. We can do the same for laptop 2, which is 00 for the hardware address, 0C, 29, 02, 20, 2C. Set the IP address to 172.31.19.102. And you can see the additions we made there. Let's go ahead and commit that. Uh, let's look at the actual DHCP bindings. We can see that we've handed out dot two and dot one. Let's clear those bindings first. Make sure that doesn't cause a problem. You see we have no bindings now. Let's jump back to the laptop devices. We can see that we have still that dot one address and we'll still continue to have that dot one address until that lease time that we set for one hour would run out unless we want to uh, manually clear that. Let's go ahead and release that and then let's do a renew. All right, now look at that. That's That looks a little better. We have 101 for that address now in the last octet that's what we need. Let's go ahead and try to ping. First we'll try to ping the internet, make sure we haven't messed up anything there. Things look great, we can hit Google. Let's try to ping server one. Hey, that's what I like to see. We can actually see that it's hitting server one. Try to ping server two. Again, we have success because we have the right IP address here. So let's jump to laptop two, see we can repeat that success. All right, here's laptop two. Again, it's going to have that old address, that dot two in the last octet. Let's release that. And then let's go ahead and renew that. All right, so we can see that 102. That's awesome, that's what we wanna see. Just make sure we still have internet access, and we do. We can ping google.com. Let's ping server one. 
Awesome. Again, we have access to server one. Let's ping server two. And server two is reachable. That's exactly what we want to see. We have now assigned the correct IP addresses based on the MAC address for each laptop and those laptops can now reach the servers because they have the correct IP address. So that brings us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte we discussed how to use the SRX as a DHCP server and then we demonstrated how to configure that and we passed out IP addresses based on MAC addresses. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.